Do you know how to handle multiple gestures at the same time in a NativeScript app without the gestures conflicting with each other? We'll tackle an example in a real-world app that's out in the app stores right now in this video. What's going on? This is Alex. I teach NativeScript courses on nativescripting.com. If you want more tips and tricks and tutorials about NativeScript, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click on the bell so you never miss a thing. NativeScript Developer Day Europe 2019 is coming up this April. And one of the organizers, Rowdy, he has created a companion app to go along with the conference. This app is out in both app stores right now. And Rowdy's been nice enough to put the source code for the app, which is written in NativeScript, up on GitHub. By the way, you should check out this conference if you can. The link to the conference and the source code is down below in the description. This is a great app, so you should check it out and use it as a reference if you need it. When I was scrolling it though, I noticed that there was a little bit of a usability issue. Sometimes when I was looking through the sessions and when I would scroll through the sessions, my finger would stop on one of them and it would open up the session details. And I didn't want that. My intention was to scroll. And that means that the scroll gesture and the tap gesture were interfering with each other. Is this nitpicky? Yeah, possibly. But I think we can really use this as an example to demonstrate how we can better the user experience and have these gestures not conflict with each other. Let's take a look at how we can do that. All right, so after trying this app on my iPhone, I went ahead and downloaded the code. Here's the project folder in my Visual Studio code, and there's the native script source code. And right over here, I'm running the actual app in iOS Simulator. I'm gonna scroll this. This is working just fine on the schedule page. I can tap on each one of these people here and open up their profiles, and that works very well. What happens if I drag a little bit and then I let go? Here's where the problem is, right? So my intention here is to drag. And if I wanna drag this down, if I wanna scroll this view, I don't want it to accidentally pop open at the end of my scroll like it does now. It's just a slight issue. It's, it's a little bit annoying, but I wanna fix it. So let's take a look at the schedule component here in the app. Here's the app code, and here is the schedule module. Everything is laid out very nicely. It's a very nicely designed app. I recommend you take a look at it as an example if you need to create your own conference app. Okay, so here is our schedule component. There is the HTML for it, and let's see. Ah, here we go. So for each one of the schedule items, we're actually rendering out a stack layout, and we have a tap event right there. Okay, so we have a scroll view, then a stack layout inside of it, and a stack layout for each one of the items. The scroll is what's giving us the scroll effect. We're not using a list view here, and we're using an ng4 for each one of these items. By the way, this applies to NativeScript Core and NativeScript View as well. So if you're using NativeScript View, you have a similar operation as Angular's ng4, where you have a for loop to render your items. So the specific UX problem we're trying to solve here is when we scroll, at the end of the scroll, we don't want the dialog to pop open like this. This is a gesture collision that we want to avoid. And we can do that by tying in the two gestures together and using some kind of flag on the back end to make sure that the two gestures don't step on top of each other. First things first, let's make sure we're detecting the scroll event. And the scroll event happens on the scroll view. So let's go ahead and bind to the scroll event of the scroll view, which is just scroll. I'm gonna set that equal to the on scroll handler, which I need to write. And I'm gonna pass in the event. And it's pretty clear with the interaction here that the tap event is actually triggering after the scroll is completed. Now to accomplish what I want to accomplish here, I essentially want to block the tap from ever happening after the scroll if they happen to be using the same finger, the same motion. Unfortunately, the tap event by itself is not going to give me what I want. It's always going to be triggered no matter what. So I want to detect the down motion of the finger and the up motion of the finger separately. So instead of the tap event, I want to use the touch event, which actually is going to give us the different parts of the touch action, the up and the down. So I'll call the handler for this touch event on schedule item touch. I want to pass in the event. We need that, and I'll show you why in a minute. And I also want to pass in this I, which happens to be the index of each of the items. Okay, and I can remove this tap event. So we need to implement these two events on scroll and on schedule item touch. 
Let's save this file. And as you can see, my editor reformatted it, but that's okay. All right, let's head over to the code. Here is that show dialog function that was handling the tap event before. We still need to keep this function because we still want to show the dialog. So we'll keep that around. So let's handle on scroll. We can skip the parameters for this one. We don't need them. And we'll be back to the implementation in a minute. And we need another handler here on schedule item touch. This one, we do need the args. And this will be of type touch gesture event data. There we go. It found it and automatically imported it for me. Let's take a look. There it is. It's coming from TNS core modules, UI gestures slash gestures. We actually don't need both gestures there. Just one is fine. And the second parameter here is the IDX, is the index of the item, which is a number. Why do we need this args here on the touch event? Well, args has an action on it. An action can be up, move, down, or cancel. So this is related to where your finger is. If you put your finger down on the device, this action will be down. And then when you lift your finger up, it'll be up. And those are the ones we care about here. Let's check to see if the action is down. And let's also check to see if the action is up. We need to have the scroll event and the touch event somehow interact together because we're using them both when we're scrolling and we're doing this with one single touch of the screen. So let's have some kind of flag that's going to be shared by the two gestures. Let's go to the top of the class here and create a new flag. It's a Boolean called selectable. I'm going to initialize that to true because initially when you tap on an item, it's going to be selectable. But if you're scrolling, we don't want an item to be selectable. So on scroll, I'm going to set this dot selectable equals false. As soon as you put your finger down and start scrolling, it'll trigger on scroll and it'll keep triggering on scroll as long as you're scrolling. So every time it scrolls, it's going to set selectable to false. Okay, so how will that interact with our touch gesture? Well, if we touch down, we want selectable to be set back to true because we want to be able to open up an item and show the details. And if we lift our finger up, that's when we want to actually show the dialog but we want to show it only if it's selectable. So I'm going to add that condition here. If args action equals up and this dot selectable, then and only then we're going to show the dialog. And I'm going to pass in that index. And just in case here, I also want to set selectable to true after we show the dialog. And this is not going to work out of the box because our show dialog function actually sets a dialog open property and the dialog open property is um, rendered by Angular. We're not really hooking into the Angular lifecycle. We need to do this so that we trigger a re-rendering. But we can kind of fool the system by doing a little trick here. We're going to set a timeout here. And I know that set timeouts are not really a pretty way of doing things, but sometimes you just have to do it. So I'm going to set a timeout here, and I'm going to show the dialog inside the timeout. I'm just going to set this to 10 milliseconds, a really short amount. Let's save that and take a look at the result. So the app is going to restart. I'm going to go to the schedule tab. Okay, so now I'm still able to scroll. Great. So every time I scroll, our selectable is set to false. And when I put my finger down on one of these items, selectable will be set to true. And when I let go, that's when it's going to show the dialog. So let's test out our interaction of the gestures now. I'm going to scroll a little bit and let go. Scroll a tiny bit let go. Okay, so that's working. Actually, that's great. Now it's not popping the window open when our intention is just to scroll. Only when we're not scrolling and I actually tap on one of the items. That's when we show the details. Well, that's it, folks. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how you can use gestures together in your own apps. It's not always cut and dry. And sometimes with a little bit of creativity, you can really improve the user experience. Do you have any questions about gestures in NativeScript? Go ahead and post your comments down below. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix. Ask me questions there as well. And make sure you subscribe to this channel where you'll get tips, tricks, and tutorials about NativeScript just like this one. And I will see you in the next one.